Welcome to Austin EV Only. Today we're going to work on a 2011 Nissan LEAF. The onboard charger, OBC, is malfunctioning. I think we've got a bad die on it. We're really not sure, but step one is to get this piece out. So today we're going to work on getting the onboard charger out. Coming up. My name is Kevin. I'm the owner of Austin EV Only. If you're new to the channel, we do repairs on all models of Tesla and the Chevy Volt, Fiat 500 electric, and the list is growing every day. If you're new here, we'd love it if you'd subscribe. It would mean a lot to us and help others find our channel. Okay, we want to take a quick measurement one more time just to see. Uh, on This is the proximity, this is the pilot. I want to make sure that the, volt, that the resistance between the pilot is just like last time. Last time I measured it in ohms. This time I want to use the diode setting. That's the only thing I want to try different. So last time it was uh, it was infinite here. So let's just double check that that's still true. Oh, four megs. Sorry, so let's reverse it and see what it is here. Okay, sorry, this way is infinite. Let's try it, this should be forward bias, so let's try it in the diode mode. And it should be infinite again. It should be, if this is forward bias, it should be 13 kilo ohms. It says voltage, so back to resistance. So the fact that it's infinite makes me think that there's a open. And then real quick on the voltage, DC voltage, there should be 4.5 volts approximately between these two pins. Sorry, let me switch it. Ground is at the bottom. And this is the proximity pin. See if I can... 4.34, perfect. So that proximity is working, the pilot is not working. Looks like it's uh, some sort of open. Unfortunately, we can't just wire in a series diode, which is suggested. A lot of folks say, hey, just take out these four uh, plugs here on the wiring on the back side, just splice in a diode on the pilot pin here. Um, but in this case, because it's not working in the, if it was shorted, then putting in a diode would be appropriate. In this case, it's not shorted, it's open. So that means we're gonna to need to replace the diode. Okay, so now we're gonna take out all of these trim pieces. The onboard charger is under this piece here, and to get to it, I actually need to take out the rear seats and the, the floorboards and even this piece here. Okay, sorry for the lighting. Here's the big reveal from the back side. Let's see if I can pull this out. Okay, there she is. Let's take a quick tour here. So this is our onboard charger. We're gonna have to get it to at it from the other side to really get it out. Um, I think one of the interesting things about this charger is that um, there is a supply line which goes in here and transfers coolant to help cool. Now, if I could just take off all of these screws here and pull this back piece off, coolant would flood this car here, but it would make the job a lot easier. Um, so we're not gonna do that, it's not my car. We're gonna have to get under the car, right here, go through the underpan, take off everything and disconnect these hoses, drain all the coolant out and then once it's all drained out, then we can uh, pull this whole piece out. Um, all the dangerous orange bitsies are in there. It's still, everything's still energized, so obviously we're not gonna touch anything in that area yet. Um, I just figured I could go ahead and take this part out first in the nice cool shade before I really go to uh, powering down everything and permanently having this car positioned here for the next couple weeks while we diagnose and fix this piece. Okay, two, Taking out the seats now.
Okay, now with the seat out, we have full access to this piece. I'm gonna hold off on taking off this piece until I uh, de-energize everything, because I feel like once I, I pull this piece off, we're gonna be exposed to some orange wires, which uh, everyone would probably appreciate safety, I'm guessing here. Okay, so let's start by disconnecting our 12 volt battery here. All right, just the negative post should be enough. Great, and let's pull the fuse. Okay, so I found the best way to get these out and there must be a special tool to pinch these together. So I'm just gonna use these two to pinch it on the side. Oh yeah, <laughs> no high voltage gloves here, digging in with pieces of metal. So I'm gonna come in on one side, pinch, come in on the other side, pinch. And once I've got both of those two together, now I'm gonna pull up, start to pull up on this. There we go. Okay, so we cleared the first hurdle there. And then it's gonna come up halfway and stop. There we go, okay, it stopped. Now we push this piece in here, and that releases it to come up the rest of the way. And then pull it out. Okay, there you go. Don't wanna to touch this part with no gloves, so that's uh, gonna keep my distance now that those are exposed. Uh, so now I'm going to take the splash panel off here and just see uh, if we can get some good access to what we're looking at. I'm not sure if I have to take the front one off also or not just to uh, drain the coolant, but let's see how far we can get here. Okay, let's start on doing as many of these as we can here. And I'm wearing safety glasses because you always get a lot of dirt in your eyes when you're doing this. All right, what else do we got here? We got this guy here. Just gonna see if I can twist it off. Yeah, see, it feels like it's coming off. Okay, great. And then we got two pop clips. All right, and then last but not least, there's two clips. There's one here, and so then the other one is here. And so we'll get both of those. Okay, got those two, and now we've got some, the back, the back here, I guess. Oh, 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 there's one. And this will be the second one here. All right, one hand. Let's see if she comes out. Okay, great, got that out. Okay, so first we're gonna clip or pinch these cl pinch clamps and try to wiggle them down. There's one. All right, there's two. And now, with the help of my assistant, we're gonna pull the catch basin as close as possible. So there. Great, perfect, I love it. And let me start to wiggle these guys off. Is this a 2011? Yes. So we're 12, 12 years old, correct? Yep. Right? So after 12 years, these aren't gonna wiggle too much. Let me get a screwdriver. I should have brought some uh, pinch pliers mm. to pinch those. Because it's mostly coming out of here. Mm. Alright, here comes the other one. Okay. Good. All right, do we feel good about putting the catch pan on the ground now? See if we can 
get it somewhat lined up to catch. All right, I feel pretty good about it. There. Okay, so not a lot came out, which is great, but it seems like it's gonna keep slow leaking here, so I'm gonna let it go for a while. going to take off not the front panel but the the rear panel we're in the front of the car just behind the front wheels so kind of you know between the two wheels here I'm upside down now here's the battery pack and then here is just a, uh, a windshield and we can see in here that there's a high voltage line so what we're gonna do is we want to disconnect this high voltage line so I'm gonna take off this panel here and to do it I'm gonna need six uh, 10 millimeter bolts and then the rest are all pop rivets. Okay, so I'm in the front of the vehicle now. Here's the front passenger wheel. And just behind that is a, is a windshield panel here. I wanna take this windshield off because there's a high voltage line right here that I need to disconnect. Um, so just not to get confused, it's not the front windshield, but rather behind the wheels, but in front of the battery. We're gonna take this off. There are six 10 millimeter bolts and then all the rest are just these little pop rivets here. So let's get to it. Okay, removing this thing is not 100% intuitive, so let's see if we can't uh, get it out. So this part obviously is intuitive. Pull back on this, but to slide this collar back, see it won't slide back on its own. So come around to the other side here. And on this side, there's a tab up here. Let's see if I can turn the light on. Ta-da. So there's a tab right here, kind of between the two screws towards the top. Push in on the tab while pulling back on the collar. There we go, and it slides back some. And then we're gonna push on this tab here to get it the rest of the way. And there it goes, all right. Okay, and uh, since we have all the power disconnected, we're going to go ahead and take off some of these, these bolts here. That might be the last one. Let's see here. Seems fairly fluid. Okay, there it is. I guarantee you we'll have this out in the next hour or less. Okay, let's take these, uh, I think these are 13 millimeter bolts out. Let's get them out. Brackets. All right, we're continuing with, uh, these are 16 millimeter bolts here on the bottom. Uh-oh, it's not strong enough. breaker bar okay let's try this and see if we can get a little more force on it okay I brought my uh, Torx wrench I'm gonna use it as a breaker bar here we go oh my goodness yeah that's that's what is needed Woo. wow that was really on there I wonder why so hard and why such big bolts yeah, like what, why do we need such big bolts? All right, now I'm gonna go to the back side. Over 100 foot pounds of torque needed to undo those. Switching back to my uh, impact screwdriver here. I gotta undo the wires now. Okay, now we need to undo these high voltage wires here. There's quite a few. These are low voltage data cables and then the orange, of course, are high voltage. So let's start. This is the big Wolfram one. It scares me the most. But it should be disconnected from the other end, so we shouldn't have anything to worry about at this point. Let's see, it's probably the same process. One, press on the side, slide the collar back, 
and then press on the top. Okay, so we got that one out. Great, so after I finish disconnecting all the wiring, I pull out the onboard charger and lay it on the sidewalk for a quick inspection. I remove the front cover to have a look inside at the circuit board and see if I can see anything obviously wrong. Unfortunately, I don't see anything wrong with the digital signal board on top. And to make matters worse, all the screws holding in the signal board immediately mushroom out and will not break free. So I can't get to the power board underneath. It's a bummer. I really wanted to get yeah, it off. Yeah, I know you tried. Uh, it's a... Uh, have it's, a look. It's up to you. You know, if you want to take yeah. it back to the shop. Yeah, I got I, I mean, good. I have to. You have to take it There's anyway. nothing more I can do. For some reason, I thought that that diode was on this side. What number were you looking for? Four? What? Uh, yeah, down here. What's on this type here? We're looking for D547. There's a lot of things that could be, but yeah. We'll, yeah well, uh, there's a lot of components to take, so it'll yeah. take some time to uh, to fill around it. I'm just looking real quick to see do we see anything that's like uh, discolored, smoke. Did you say it was on the other side? That's why we couldn't the, find yeah, it. Yeah, I looked at the video again, and it's yeah. the one that I want to test is on the other side. That's most likely the problem. And so yeah, so I can order some of these little diodes here, and then I got to do a little soldering and uh, surface mount soldering, which is not easy, but we'll we'll get it, and then uh, go from there. If you'd like to see a video of me tearing down the OBC and analyzing each circuit board, click here now to take you to that video. I definitely find a smoking gun inside that points to the problem. Okay, so it's been a little over a month, and here's the uh, old one. And to be honest, I just gave up trying to tear into it. So we bought a new one and we're gonna install the new one today. I've gotta to transfer over a couple of parts here, um, but otherwise it should be a pretty simple install. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button. And more importantly, please subscribe. That's how we make more videos. Until next time, this is Austin EV only.